What's going on everybody? Welcome back to this episode of G4 Outdoors. Today we're going to be doing a complete and thorough overview of the 2020 Toro Time Cutter My Ride 54 inch. Now if you want to watch the entire video, have at it. But if you want the quick and short answer, don't walk. Run out and get yourself one. Stick around for the rest of the video. Well, here's a little story about two friends that came together And we started up a YouTube just to talk about whatever We're on a boat catching big bass and smashing them cats From review videos to just making you laugh Cause we got guns, we got knives, we got fishing, we got hunting We got everything you like, so hit that subscribe button We're in the outdoors, doing things that we love We're talking guitars, girls, green grass, and guns now before we get started, I do need to mention that this is a sponsored video by Toro and we do appreciate them sending this mower out to us. I am obligated to give you all the specs on this machine, but stick around because here on G4 Outdoors, we bring you the truth and honest opinions on all these products. So stick around for the rest of the video. So we're going to start off with the obvious. Of course, it's a MyRide system. Let's talk a little bit about the 2020 model and how they've upgraded this. In the previous years, they've had two shock absorbers in the back that you had to manually adjust each one of those. You had to stop your mower, get off, and adjust those to your riding position or whatever terrain you're going on or how much you weigh. With the new system being over here on the side and easy to adjust with just one lever, one is a little bit rough and the other smooth, you're going to want your my ride either softer or harder to compensate for that ground. So if you're running on the same ground and you know you're going to be running over some rough patches, let's take for example, right now I have it set on the firmest setting. And as you can see, there's not a lot of movement in here. Even though it does have the full range, it takes a lot to get that full range out of it. Now I'm going to adjust this all the way down into its softest setting and show you the big difference. So as you can see right there, there's a huge difference. And like I say, what that really helps out on, you can put it down into a smoother setting if you're running on a really soft surface. But the, the rougher your ground is, you're gonna to wanna to firm that up a little bit so that you're not bottoming out on those shocks. Now coming all the way up to the very top, you do have a very nice plush leather wrap seat here. And it does have an adjustment to move the seat forward or backward depending on how tall you are, where your comfort level is. Now another cool system on here is the Smart Speed Control System. This is made for whether you're a beginner or an expert at zero turn lawnmowers. It also helps if you're towing stuff or just running wide open in a field. This has an adjustment right here of whether your throttle controls will go slow and this minimizes your speed pretty slow to a fair pace. So if, if you're a new user on here, you can throw this all the way back and it won't let you use all of the power. Here in the middle mode, it has a towing picture on here. So the middle mode, you're in between the full speed and the slow speed, but it's really good for towing stuff. Then you can move all the way up into the rabbit system, and this will give you all of the horsepower or all of the speed out of the uh, handles here. So it's a nice feature to have. If you're going around some really tight objects and you're not really comfortable with steering, you can move this all the way down to the slow position and you can really get into the flower beds and stuff a little more accurately. But once you move up and you're a lot more comfortable with the machine, most of the time you can just leave this in fast. On the time cutter, you do have an easy deck adjustment system. You do have the foot control here where you just push that down, then you can change the height of your blades, which goes all the way from one and a half inches all the way up to four and a half. Now you don't necessarily need to use the foot pedal. The deck is easy enough to lift that I can actually do that by hand. So this is a very nice system. You can be running along and just quickly lift that up if you need to. Or if you're running along and you don't want to use the handle, just use the foot control and raise that up. That'll keep you from scalping over tree stumps that are stuck up or unleave unlevel ground. Now let's jump back into the MyRide system just for a minute. Everything that is silver here that you see, that is part of the MyRide system. And this is one individual unit aside from everything that you see is red and black. So this whole silver piece is what's floating around. You have a shock absorber here in the front. And that's really nice for your feet and everything from here on forward. That keeps everything nice and cushiony. Now moving on to the back side of it, of course the seat raises up and it does have a latch. 
But as you can see, all of this silver back here is still yet part of the MyRide system. And they do have the torsioning springs going sideways this time. And I'll roll in a clip here of how the old models used to be and why I like this so much better. Now there are some things that I do like to nitpick on mowers and one of them is the seat completely flopping over when you raise the seat up. This one right here stays into place. It doesn't fall forward and land on the front deck. Now while the seat is up, Toro did do all they could do to lower the center of gravity on this and one of them includes the battery being lowered down into the frame. Now what really makes a mower is the motor on back. And here we have the Toro V-Twin commercial mower. This is a 708 cc, 24 and a half horsepower motor. Let's go over some of the options on this motor. Now one thing that I think that all motor manufacturers around the world should be doing is making your oil changes easier and cleaner. Here on the Toro motor, we have the quick drain system. All you have to do is pull the tube out from the top unsnake it from the blue holders and once you drain this once you lean this down the oil is going to come out so you can put the hose wherever you want you can put your drain pan right here no spills no messes and when you're done just snake it right through the blue and put it back up there into its little cup there and you're done you're good to go so along with your oil change maintenance you're going to want to change your spark plug and your air filter the spark plugs are very easy to get to. They're right here on the side. Right here on the side, you can see how well that line of sight is. Tools are easy to get in there. You also want to go and change your air filter, and that's another thing that's easy to get to. Right here under the cap, flip it up, and here's your air filter. It does come with a, a two-stage uh, two air filtration. So dust off the foam, get a new inner, and slap it right back in. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now the 2020 Toro Time Cutter with the Toro motor, the motor and the deck comes with a three year unlimited hour warranty. That is a awesome warranty. Three years unlimited hours. Now you can go above and beyond that by a Toro care package, which includes your oil, air filter, spark plugs. I might be missing something, but if you buy that upgrade, it gives you one extra year of warranty on the motor. Now it is a little bit dusty because I have already mowed with it once just to get a feel for things, but this does have a tow hitch on it so that you can carry your yard cart around or whatever attachments you, you want to tow with it. Now in case you wanted to move your mower without starting it, your hydro releases are very easy to get to right here. All you have to do is put those in their respective notches. And now you can push your mower. Now let's talk about the frame. This does have a C-channel frame. Not to worry about it not being a tubular frame. I've taken this over some really wonky ground and there is zero flex in this mower. So there's nothing to worry about there. Now let's talk about the casters up front. What they've done is went with a cast aluminum front caster. Now what this does, this eliminates the need. If you run into something and bend your frame, this eliminates the need to have to take it to the shop, have your frame straightened out, and adjust anything, have to put new bearings in here. Whatever you need to do from an accident, this alleviates the problem. If you break this, you can simply take these two bolts off, buy a new caster, put it in, and you're good to go. Now, in my opinion, I don't think that you will ever run into anything fast enough or hard enough to actually break one of these. I could be wrong, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Now, one of the things that I am thoroughly impressed with on this mower is the beefy tires that it comes with. These front tires, as large as they are, they do a couple of things. They alleviate a lot of shock when you're driving, and it also alleviates a lot of ground wear. So if you're running those same lines over and over, the wider these are, the less of an imprint you're gonna leave on the ground, and it's better for your grass. Now these do have beefy, premium, 20 by 10 by 10 rear tires. These things have phenomenal traction. Now why I really like these tires, first of all is the traction. Second of all is the contact patch to the ground. You don't have the bubble tire. So again, if you're running over and over your same stripes, it's gonna take you a lot longer to put impressions into the ground. So these are a lot friendlier on your turf and they give you a lot more traction at the same time. 
Now the gear drive on this is the Hydro Gear 2200s. What the 2200s will give you is about seven miles an hour on your ground speed. Now this is where you're gonna to need to really think about what you're gonna be doing with your mower. Whether you're gonna be doing a bunch of heels, a bunch of towing, or if you want to go faster. If you want any of those, you really should step up into a higher model of the Toro MyRide system mowers. That'll give you better speed, better towing capacity, and you can sustain a load on that motor for a little bit longer. Now what we have here is the 54 inch iron forged cutting system. This is a 10 gauge deck. That is a very heavy deck for this lineup of mowers. Along with the deck being 10 gauges, has a full wrap around bumper on the lower edge of your deck. That's going to eliminate a lot of deck bending if you ever hit anything. And that's something that doesn't come standard on a lot of mowers in this category as well. Now on the Toro deck, they do have a fantastic design on the belt covers. A lot of mowers you'll have to either unbolt this to really get the grass out from under here. Some of them actually have ports to where you don't have to take this off and you can blow this out. But for ease of maintenance, it cannot be any easier than just pushing this in and pulling this off. That makes blowing off the deck or changing your belt or any maintenance you need to do up here as easy as possible. Uh, in my opinion, this is one of the easiest ones on the market. Now, one of the most important things on any mower that you get is blade speed and grass dispersion. Hold on to your knickers because I want you to listen to this deck. Now not only does that have excellent grass dispersing capabilities, that deck is extremely smooth. So there's no rattling going on or anything. That's a smooth deck. Now, everything that I just mentioned means nothing if the mower doesn't cut good. So I'm gonna run you over a couple of different kinds of grass. Right here we just have field grass. It's a mixture of everything. This is a field that I've been taking care of for quite a while. So let's run some stripes in it, see how it does. Alright, so this is my second time mowing with this mower the first time out in this field. As you can see by itself, it stripes fairly well in this. I'm probably not in the correct sun position to actually show you some really good stripes. I just walked this and the cut quality on this thing is very good so far in this field on this kind of grass. Now to be fair, spring is just starting so this, not, this isn't full and lush like some of your yards would be. Now what we have over here is what we call our proving grounds. This is where we just have tall, nasty grass, just field grass. It is thick, there's green grass under here, it's been wet, so if it's going to have a challenge, this is going to be it.
Now with any mower, you're gonna to have to double cut this. But if you heard the RPMs of the engine, this did not bog down at all. Zero did this bog down. So in the heavy grass, did an excellent job. Now what we have over here is another field, but this is well-maintained field. Uh, they actually fertilize and take care of this. It's not super lush, but it is very good grass. As you can see here, this was the first spot that I mowed with the mower. I mowed that three days ago and it looks pretty sharp. Uh, just to prove that I did that, let's start on some new lines over here. Are you seeing that? <laughs> that was full speed on this mower. And as I'm going back and forth, I'm looking at my cuts. This grass is 100% cut. There's no stragglers running around here. You would have to walk out here and actually get down on hands and knees to find stragglers out here. I am thoroughly impressed, 100% impressed with the cut quality of this. I don't know if you could see the grass dispersion out here, but I know it was blowing all over me like crazy with the wind, but there are no clump lines running with these, with these stripes out here. It's not just laying them over one roll, it's putting them way out there. So, and I'm telling you, if you, if you like stripes like this, hop on board. Let's go to another yard. All right, now what we have is an actual nice yard. This has nice grass in it. There's uh, some pretty heavy clumping in here from another mower. Sorry, Seth. Uh, we're just going to run over this. It does need to be cut again, so we're going to run over this, make sure all these clumps get dispersed, and see how it stripes up and how it cuts. I don't care who you are that looks good not only does that look good i got rid of all the clumps in there and again as i was looking at my previous pass that i was mowing this thing is cutting 100 percent zero stragglers and i have yet to demo a mower that actually cuts 100 percent now other than uh that heavy stuff that i mowed a little while ago you know pretty much any mower is going to have to go over that a couple of times and mow that. That's just to test the motor out and see how strong it is, see how well it disperses the grass. But when it comes to actually mowing lawns, this thing is incredible. Are you getting rain up there? 
Well, that literally came out of nowhere. So even better yet, we're gonna mow a fresh wet yard just as soon as this quits. All right, with a couple of hours of rain that just went by, it's not the optimal time to be mowing. Uh, as you can see, I got quite a hill in my backyard as I did on the last property. But with the rain that has come down, I'm gonna have slippery grass. So I know my limits in my yard of where I can't mow and all of that is down there in that corner. Uh, I can't go beyond those trees. I've learned my lesson. I've been through that fence before on a slide mower. No more going there. So what we're gonna be testing here is actually how good this can get the grass out from underneath the deck on the grass dispersion. We have very wet grass. My yard isn't in the best of shape. Uh, I quit caring about five years ago after 10 years of trying to take care of it. Way too much clay out here. But the big clumps of grass, the really lush green grass, that's what's gonna get stuck up under your deck. So let's go ahead and cut this and see how well it does. Do what? I will stick a camera up under there in a second, but as you can see, there's very minimal amount of grass stuck up in there. It's more of a more of all the green stuff out of the grass. Uh, I haven't been in grade school for a long time, so I don't remember what this is called. <laughs> uh, yeah, all of the grass has come out of the deck. All right, now that we're reaching the end of the video, we're gonna go over some of the things that I don't like. Now, on every mower, you're gonna have something that you don't like. But these, th these two things that I don't like, I would really like to see money transferred from one thing that I don't like into another thing that I don't like. Would you mind putting your elbows on the armrest? <laughs> you see the problem here? Can you put your arms down? Like all the way down? The, the armrests are really just completely useless on this mower. I think they're just here for show. Uh, as you can see, even with her arms all the way down, her elbows still aren't rested on this. As you can see, really the only time that these armrests are utilized is if you were really slunched over, the mower was stopped, you're just sitting back here chilled out on the phone. Now what I would like to see that money reallocated to is an hour meter. There is not an hour meter on this machine. So with the three year unlimited hour warranty on this mower, you really can't give an hour assumption to this even if you go to sell this you're not going to know how many hours are on it uh, you're supposed to change the oil in a certain amount of hours there's no way to know how many hours are ran on this mower if you're a residential lawn mower like this if this is for your home you might change it once a year but what if you're mowing more than what you thought you were and you went over that hour limit what if you're using this for light duty commercial work you don't really know where your hours are so when are you going to know when to change your oil that's why i say i would really like to see the money from the armrest go into an hour meter or even if you're going to put an armrest on there let's put a real one on there one that's actually going to be utilized while you're mowing the armrests really do help out when there's one there oh well, look i guess i found a use for that armrest after all the third thing that i really don't like about this mower it's probably my biggest gripe is this has to go back to Toro in a couple of days. Disappointed in that, but I do appreciate them sending the mower out for me to review. I've had a blast mowing with it, and I really love the way that it cuts. I love the MyRide system, and actually three years ago I did make a video on the MyRide system, and I've liked it ever since. So if there's anything that you guys want to know, leave a comment down below. Let me know what those questions are. Hopefully I'll be able to have this for just a little while longer and I can go over some more details on this mower to help you guys out. So if you like the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below, stick around for some more videos. And if you haven't yet, check out a video like this. Check out a video like this and we'll see you in the next one. I'm out. Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday. I just dream of fishing while I'm going through my work day. I listen to my boss, though he's driving me berserk. Damn it, I can't take much more because my brain is really.